I've got something special. This is the ultimate Alder Lake workstation platform, even for non-Xeons. And yes, it will support error correcting memory on desktop i7s. What? Gigabyte, the MW34SP0. <laughs> All right, hold on, slow down. The i7-12900K supports error correcting memory? Well, unless it's a mistake on Intel Arc, yes. But only if you use an error correcting chipset. Listen, DDR5 that is error correcting is basically impossible to find right now. It is being manufactured, it's just that mostly it's being bought up and it's artificially expensive. You don't really need it in a server platform anyway, or even a workstation for that matter. Enter the Gigabyte MW34 SP0. This would be my choice for something for Alder Lake. But it's also kind of weird, because the pricing around Alder Lake is not completely absurd. I mean, historically, I was like, e Xeon V3, Xeon V4. It's like, oh, it's got an iGPU, which you can use for quick sync. Those were relatively expensive CPUs for the horsepower that you got. And people still bought them because, you know, it's commercial use and blah, 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 and good, good margin. I mean, that's fine. But this, the MW34 SP0, we're in a situation where you could use this to build an ultra low cost forbidden router. Actually, I've got a video coming up on this. You can tell I've, I've redone the plastic like five or six times now. This is a 100 gigabit Mellanox Connect X5. Well, now Nvidia. And yes, you absolutely can saturate this. Now the configuration that I'm gonna show you is the more sane six Alder Lake cores, the i5-12400. It's six P cores and no E cores. And that as a platform for a forbidden router is a really good choice. Why? Well, the Alder Lake P cores are absolutely absurdly bananas. They're very fast. When we're talking routers and embedded systems, mostly you don't need core count. Even an enthusiast doesn't really need a crazy core count. You, you and your, you know, all 12 members of your family are on your Plex media server, plus it's doing pie hole, plus routing, plus whatever. You don't need a 64 core system to do that. Even if you had an ARM system, something low power, what you actually need is something that has insanely fast single cores. That is the best bang for your buck because most of that stuff will improve dramatically from a higher clock rate than more cores because it doesn't really scale all that well. Alder Lake has a pretty good amount of cash. Rocket Lake's gonna have even more. That's probably something we can look at for this board and revisit later. Ping me, comment, let me know. But uh, that's why I'm really excited by the W680 platform overall. Let's take a look at the board from Gigabyte. First up, yes, it does have the ridiculous power delivery. So if you did wanna run a 12900, don't really recommend the K, you can. And it will sustain 200 and, uh, 223 watts, as long as you have reasonable cooling. Uh, so you can turbo all day long with that 12900K in this platform, 16 cores, eight P cores, and eight E cores. But there's a Linux sort of dark side we need to talk about in a minute with those E cores. But yeah, the power delivery on this board can absolutely do that. For something like our 12400 with uh, six Alder Lake P cores, this is overkill. This is actually overkill in a workstation board for all that. We have a system management input header at the top, an eight pin power connector, our standard 24 pin ATX power connector, and DDR4. This is uh, worth the price of admission on this board because it's so hard to get DDR5. Error correcting DDR4, 128 gigabytes of memory on this platform, no problem. It will not do registered error correcting memory, just error correcting memory, unregistered ECC. So be sure not to accidentally buy registered ECC. There's another version of this motherboard that has integrated 10 gig, definitely an option if you wanna do that. As it stands, we have two PCI Express 5.0 slots. That's right, these slots are rated for PCI Express 5, X16 or X8, X8 for your configuration. We also have a PCI Express by four slot in the bottom, which is great if you're rocking something like, you know, a 10 gig card. You're slumming it with like the dual Intel 10 gig, like the X710 or something like that. You can put that in the bottom slot and you're good to go if you didn't get on board. If you're rocking your Mellanox card, you can, you know, do that. It's too bad, the whole PCI Express 5 thing, because you could do 100 gigabit on PCI Express 5 by 8, but ludicrously expensive, blah, 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 not really recommended, but it's an option. This motherboard also has four onboard M.2, which are all PCI Express 4.0.
It has onboard remote management that is an A speed 2600. We also have onboard USB C, a 30 pin USB header, as well as a USB 2.0 header. So, whatever accessories you want to rock, you can. It has eight built in SATA ports, plus a number of four pin fan headers, three right angle at the front, another four pin here near your SATA connections, two at the bottom edge of the motherboard, and one up here near your RAM. I love the plain Gigabyte packaging. There's not a lot extra in the box. You do have M.2 heat shields, which is a very nice accessory in this, you know, bundle. You get your rainbow colored uh, IO shield connector. And then there's no manual, there's just this installation sheet. Because if you're buying this motherboard, you know what you're doing. You've also got four included SATA cables. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need. Do you really need anything else? Now in terms of onboard connections, there's onboard VGA. That's from our ASP2600. You don't have to add a discrete GPU to this unless you want to do, you know, Plex media server transcoding or something like that. It also has HDMI and DisplayPort out. That's for the iGPU in your Intel CPU, if your Intel CPU has an iGPU. RS-232 serial, a 2.5 gigabit Intel NIC, two 10 gigabit USB ports, one type A, one type C, two five gigabit USB ports, and our dedicated IPMI remote management NIC. There's also a very simple built-in audio solution. So you can use this board as a workstation board. Now we might maybe finally kind of sort of be entering an era where you can get an internet connection at home faster than a gigabit. And most routers, especially home grade or consumer grade routers, things that don't cost a thousand dollars, really have trouble switching packets faster than a gigabit. Now, while this motherboard only has a 2.5 gigabit interface that's built in, a lot of ISPs, even major ones, are offering interfaces to the internet that are two and a half gig, three gig, five gig, 10 gig. And this platform can do that really inexpensively. I mean, the 12400 CPU Micro Center has regularly had for just over $100. The motherboard's gonna cost more than that. Uh, you know, another $100 or so for 16 or 32 gigabytes of DDR4 error correcting memory. Throw in some cheap storage and some other options. We actually have a fifth, you know, uh, M.2, this is the E key for Wi Fi. So you could do, you know, a Wi Fi solution there. Although, soft, you know, like software Wi Fi is kind of like a, a weird thing in terms of, you know, wanting this to be an access point. Don't know that I'd recommend that. What I'd actually recommend there is a, like an LTE modem kind of thing. You can use this as like a backup connection on the LTE side of things. Using this as a platform for something like that border gateway, firewall, intrusion detection and prevention. Those six Alder Lake P cores are really incredible for something like that because they're so fast and they're so, they're so good single threaded. Now this wouldn't be good for a large enterprise because those things actually do need more cores because there's more traffic and things like that. But even if you had five or six really heavy power users at home, you could do real time intrusion prevention at speeds faster than a gigabit with something modest like the 12400. I've also got the i3. This is the 12100. This is four Alder Lake P cores. This is also a good option that's under $100 for this platform that is, because it's still the Alder Lake P cores and it'll still turbo like nobody's business. This platform will still work for that. And I didn't tell you this, but you can still do the PL2 thing if you fiddle with the power settings and this thing will run faster than it's rated for. It's not really an overclock, it's just using more power than it was really designed for. So upgrading the cooler, eh, maybe worth it. Cause you know, these come with a box cooler, so nah. In terms of this platform the Gigabyte has put together, I really don't have any complaints. It might have been nice to have more PCIe slots. I mean, we certainly got the M.2 slots. It might be nice to have that for PCIe devices. There are other options. We did a video a while back that I called, you know, PCIe cheat codes. Here's one of them. This is an M.2 that is an Intel i225V 2.5 gig NIC. This is also available in a dual configuration, so you get two 2.5 gigabit NICs and also a 10 gig configuration, so you can have a 10 gigabit NIC on an M.2. So you can add more network interfaces using your M.2 slots instead of your PCIe slots if you need to reserve your PCIe slots for something really just completely and utterly insane like a 100 gigabit local LAN connection. You can also use this as four 25 gigabit connections if you want, if you want to break it out into VLANs or do anything else like that. But as a home router, having the backbone be a 100 gigabit and then splitting off your DMZ to be you know, only 25 gigabit, I mean, talk about first world problems, am I right? There's a link 
below in the description for this motherboard from Gigabyte. You should definitely check it out. This video isn't sponsored or anything, but if you check out this motherboard by clicking on the link for Gigabyte's website, they sort of see that you're interested and that this channel generates a lot of traffic and interest and it just sort of validates things in the analytics from their perspective. So uh, check out the link in the description and see what you think about this motherboard, think about it. And uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe we'll do a giveaway or a build or something in the uh, in the forums and do some other stuff. I do have another video coming up on this. So in the Forbidden Router video, I used this Sliger rack mount case. Those are quiet and they're not full depth and they're also really great for a home lab type situations. They are a little pricey, you know, a couple hundred bucks, 300 bucks, something like that. So you gotta, see, you know, do it nice for your home uh, home lab, home router situation, but I'm gonna put this motherboard uh, in one of the Sliger cases and do an alternative low-cost build Forbidden Router based around probably the six-core uh, Alder Lake uh, i5. There's no E cores. Now Linux, I mentioned Linux. So mixing P cores and E cores with most Linux-based operating systems, Linux is not a great experience right now with the E cores, especially if you turn the PL2 stuff up. And that is just because of the way that, you know, ThreadDirector is handled or not really handled on current versions of the Linux kernel. Uh, if you wanted to use like say XCPNG as your hypervisor, um, it's really not great because the scheduler doesn't seem to handle it correctly for those home user scenarios. Nobody's using it on Alder Lake, you know, server, small, small server or whatever with mixed P cores and E cores. And so things that really should have been scheduled on a P core end up being scheduled on an efficiency core and background tasks that could have been scheduled on an E-Core end up running on a P-Core, a little bit of a mess. I'm hoping that that situation continues to improve because it's gonna be a lot of the same kind of thing when Rocket Lake launches. Um, if you know what you're doing, you know, definitely you could run mixed P-Cores and E-Cores. You know, the, the i5-12600K does support error correcting memory, whereas the 12100 and the 12400, at least according to Intel Arc, I don't think those support error correcting memory. It's just the higher end parts, which is weird because in generations gone by, like the Pentium and the i3 would do error correction because Intel expected those to be embedded in systems that were too cheap to have, you know, a Xeon. I don't know, things are weird since there's competition in the market and everything else. But the W680 chipset is the thing that unlocks these server-ish features. And of course, remote management is nice because if something goes wrong or sideways, you can remotely manage it. And because it's got built-in VGA, you don't need an add-in graphics card. Although, depending on your CPU, you might not have needed an add-in graphics card anyway, but it's nice to have options. Other than that, no complaints. It seems to be a really solid product. I'm one of those level one. Be sure to check out that link. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums. Oh, and be sure to look for that future video where we build another forbidden router, except one that's not thousands upon thousands of dollars. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums. I'll see you there.